Hey everybody, this is a very depressing little Python script that I put together. And um, the idea behind it is dumb. It just, uh, I thought it would be interesting to try to go calculate the number of um, people who are infected with coronavirus backwards because there are not enough tests uh, available. Uh, I do not in any way represent this as being accurate or anything. It's just sort of an interesting uh, idea and it's a, it's a very, very simple script. So I thought I would uh, show this. So let me go take a look. So um, basically I've got um, this, uh, this website, which is the uh, coronavirus situation dashboard. Um, I think this is by John Hopkins. I forget who it is, but it, it's, you know, one of the relatively decent uh, sites. So uh, this is looking at the United States, which I've selected, which is um, confirmed cases, uh, 273,808, and the deaths are uh, 7,000 as of April 5th, 2020. So um, according to the, which one was it? The, um, this is CDC numbers. Uh, doubling time is three days. And the case fatality rate was, uh, I think the most recent one was like 2.7. Right. So basically what I did is I took this little script uh, and go make this bigger somehow. Appearance. Go in. All right. So hopefully this is visible. So basically I've got the doubling in days. So let me go up, uh, replace this with three. Uh, whoops. And zero two seven was the right count. And then the, was it 7,000 and 80, something like that. And then uh, lag is 20. So basically the idea is um, coronavirus has a, a lag to it. So when you get coronavirus, you don't die the first day. On average, you die about 20 days after you get the, the virus. So if, um, you know, basically 0.27% of people with coronavirus die, and you know the number of people who die, you can basically calculate the number of people who have coronavirus, but it's not actually the number of people who had coronavirus today. It's the number of people who had coronavirus 20 days ago. So then what you do is you basically go back 20 days and you say, all right, it's gonna double every X number of days. So in this case, it's three days. So every three days you double um, and it should give you a uh, rough idea of how many people have uh, have coronavirus now. Yay. <laughs> and this video is demonetized because I used the C word. Um, so uh, it's a really simple script. So basically the count is equal to the death count, which is 7,020 uh, divided by the mortality rate. I right, to go figure out what the, what the total count is. And then we have the iteration, which is basically the lag. So 20 days divided by doubling in days, which is three. So basically 20 divided by three. And then you print day one. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and print, uh, you know, the, uh, the range, um, which would be day zero. Um, and then we have the, the basically just a loop, right, for X and range one, two iterations as an integer because you're doing a loop, you're doing whole numbers. And then uh, basically every time we go through an iteration, count is equal to count times two because it's going to double. Um, so um, should be good there. Yeah, depressing. But we'll uh, take a look at what this is, what this is going to be. So let's go ahead and write that and we can go ahead and run this. So 
day zero, it looks like it's uh, roughly 260,000. And if we go back over here, whoops, that's the wrong one. If we go back over here, uh, 273,000. So, all right, that doesn't 100% line up, but it's relatively close. It must be someone off there. They must have a, it must be a, a different rate. Again, it also confirmed cases. So, confirmed cases are, you know, um, certainly not perfect. But we've got, um, yeah, um, first doubling, 520,000. Uh, and then it gets to be, you know, over, uh, over a million, and then 2 million, 4 million, 8 million. That's not a great, <laughs> so that's the number who have it. Um, and then of course we could also go ahead and print the, the number of, of people who would be potentially dying. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to do that because it's just way too depressing. Um, so that's a bizarre little Perl script, not Perl script, Python script that I threw together, uh, which is not the most, uh, fun thing in the world, but I'll tell you what it is more fun than. Uh, it's more fun than just watching the news and obsessing over this stuff. If you are watching the news more than, you know, an hour or so a day with this stuff going on, I would, uh, I would strongly recommend against it. This really doesn't have anything to do with IT career stuff. I just thought that this was just like an interesting thing to kind of point out that it's good to find distractions, even if they're kind of morbid distractions. And it's also, you know, not a terrible thing to be able to like, just go sanity, check the numbers because, you know, a lot of the information that we're getting is, is not phenomenal. And I, I, again, I don't claim this to be in any way accurate, right? Like this is just very ballpark information based on data that's hopefully from good sources, but we don't really know. And I don't know exactly how they're saying somebody is dying of coronavirus versus um, dying of coronavirus plus something else. You know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how the statistics are being recorded. So it, it's certainly a far from perfect thing. Uh, but the point is, is don't get sucked into the, the, the thing where you just watch the news because it's incredibly stressful. Um, if you're looking for good information, John Hopkins is a good source of information on coronavirus. Um, they're one of the, you know, authoritative sources. Um, I wish I could say World Health Organization and the CDC. Um, it's a little bit depressing that those are not necessarily the, the best sources given the um, kind of bizarre track record that they've had in this, uh, in this situation. Um, I think we can probably, I think they've done, hopefully the numbers are better now, but, um, I certainly don't think that there's anything that's going to be bad about going directly to the sources like John Hopkins. Um, you know, um, Harvard is, is I'm sure publishing statistics from their, um, school of medicine. Um, you know, other, other universities, Oxford, you know, is going to have an epidemiology uh, department that, that I'm sure is publishing information. So you can go just directly to those locations as well as medical journals and not get all the hype and insanity and craziness of watching the, the news. Um, and on a, on a related subject, <clears throat> and I know some people hate it when I talk about politics stuff, and this is very generic, right? So I'm not going to endorse any particular political beliefs or, or anything like that. But I've been doing a um, sort of a running poll of my friends. And um, I, I tend to be somebody who is, is involved in politics and I, I volunteer for campaigns and um, you know, raise money and, and do things like that in, in my spare time uh, for causes and candidates that I, I like. And um, so my friend base tends to be a little bit more political than average as a decent number of those friends come from you know past political campaigns. So they tend to be on average a bit more political than probably your average person's uh, friend group. Uh, but as I've been talking to people through video chats and uh, text messaging and just phone calls and things like that over the last um, you know week or so, um, I've been doing sort of an informal, um, loose kind of study where I ask them, have you contacted your representatives? Um, so I live in the U.S. I live in California specifically. Um, so... I've got two senators, 
as you know, everybody does. And I've got a congressperson that represents me. In my case, it's uh, Maxine Waters, because uh, I live here in Los Angeles in the South Bay. And <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and obviously, I have a, a governor as well. And um, I called them and gave them my opinions on how I felt. Uh, any bailout should go and what I thought priorities should be and things like that. Of course, nobody picked up the phone and actually talked to me, but I, I left a message uh, and sent emails. Um, and it took me maybe 15, 20 minutes all told to do all of them, right? So not 50 minutes each, 50 minutes, uh, some total for, for all of them. And um, yeah, and talking to my friends, uh, out of maybe about 42, 43 people, I think it was two who had contacted their their representatives. And um, I imagine that you have an opinion on how the government should be responding. Uh, and this is true whether you live in the United States or you, you live in Great Britain or Australia or France or Belgium or wherever you live, Taiwan, um, wherever it is, right? You have some government representatives who represent you. And if you're in a democratic country, you get to vote for them. And I think it's very important, given that we're in a time that's obviously very unique and is going to be a period that is, you know, memorable in history. Then you try to participate and be an active citizen. Um, pretty much all of us at this point, unless you're uh, a frontline responder, um, essential service kind of person is working from home or staying from home, which means that you have a whole bunch of time that you may have been commuting that you're not commuting now. Take five minutes tomorrow. Call your congressperson, right? Or your um, parliamentary representative, whatever it is. Send them an email. In my opinion, the way that my country is handling the pandemic is not what I would like to see. I don't know what your opinion is, but hopefully you have some kind of opinion. And I think it's very important that we articulate what those opinions are to our representatives so that after this is over, they cannot claim that they didn't know what we wanted them to do. Now, I know it feels like oftentimes you're shouting off into the, the void, uh, but the way that this works, at least in the United States, having some familiarity with, with politics, is, is pretty straightforward. You send an email, you leave a voice message uh, on your congressperson, your representative's um, you know, answering service. And what's going to happen is an intern is going to later on uh, collate the messages, you know, a couple times a day maybe, and they will put those into a spreadsheet uh, that tracks what people's opinions are on various topics. And this is true whether it's an email or whether it's a voicemail or whether it's a handwritten letter. And the, the idea is that very few people are actually active enough to contact their representative. I think it's uh, probably like one in a thousand maybe. So what they do is they do the same kind of calculation that I did here, where um, you know, if only 3% of people are willing to call a, um, an office with a particular opinion, you know, based on the number of people that call, you can roughly extrapolate the number of people who have the, the same opinion. So it actually goes a lot further than I think people think. Um, I know if you're in a large, country, if you're in a large state like I am, um, sometimes voting can feel a bit underwhelming because you're only one of God knows how many votes that are coming in. But when it comes to phone calls or emails or writing letters, that actually does have visibility to your representatives. And I think it's very important that whatever your opinion is, you hold your representatives accountable for what they do now. Um, we're in weird times. And I think if you're not going to be an active citizen now, I can't imagine what would make you 
B1. I mean, this is a serious occasion. And I know this isn't really in line with the, with the channel, uh, but just as something to think about, take some time, contact your congressperson, contact your senator, contact your governor, uh, contact your PM if you're uh, if somewhere that has a parliamentary system or whatever your your representative system is, you're going to have some local representatives and tell them what you think. If you think that when you enter a public building, they should be taking your temperature because that's a very low cost, low effort thing, even though it's not necessarily perfect, let them know that. Um, if you think that they should be uh, leaning more towards uh, money to small businesses, right? Let them know that. If you feel that, um, you know, any large corporations that get um, you know, forgiven grants or, or, or loans that don't need to be paid back um, from the government need to give the, the government an equity stake until that money is paid back, let them know that. Those may be not your opinions. That's fine. <laughs> if you think that, you know, they should do something completely different. They should not be giving, um, you know, support or uh, services to anyone. And then they should let everyone out of their houses and not uh, make people shelter in place. Um, personally, I, I disagree with that pretty strongly, but let your congressperson or your representative know. It's not very difficult, right? You got maybe three, four or five people that you might want to contact. And you assume it's, Five minutes each, 25 minutes, do one a day, not too hard. Anyway, something to think about. Um, I'd be uh, just out of curiosity, just for my own personal kind of thing. If you have contacted your representative about this, or actually just kind of anything, if you've ever contacted your representative, contacted a political representative in, let's say, the last year, I'd love to know. Uh, that you did and uh, how often you do that kind of thing in the, in the comments. And if you're somebody who doesn't, uh, I'd love to hear kind of why not. Um, is it just like a time thing? Is it uh, because you don't believe that uh, the system will work? If you think that's just too corrupt, um, that kind of stuff. Jump in the, the, the comments below. I'd be just kind of curious to, to see what um, your, your thinking is around that. Uh, anyway, quick video. Uh, I'll probably do another one the, later on in the week. Um, also, I was thinking about doing a live stream uh, if anybody is interested. One of the things I realized is that uh, since I've been over a thousand uh, subscribers for for a while now, I actually qualify as an account that can do li YouTube live streams now. So if uh, if you guys would be interested in doing a live stream, either to do as a, sort of like a Q and A thing, or just kind of hang out in this weird kind of time when everybody's sort of socially isolated. Uh, let me know and I can think about maybe trying to go schedule that. Um, and also give me, give me an idea if, if you get a particular time that would be uh, particularly good for you. I'm in Pacific time out here in California. So uh, we'll have to take that into account. But anyway, uh, take care of yourself, stay safe, be good to each other. And I will see you in the next video. Uh, have a great day.